Hello, my name is Dr. Michael Okureke. Welcome to my YouTube channel on getting started with modeling. Today, this video is about beam analysis and the focus is on the effect of cross-section, the shape of the cross-section in terms of influencing <coughs> the results of your beam, beam analysis. Please, if this is a kind of content that you like, I do encourage you to please click the subscribe button so that you can subscribe to this channel and also click the notification button so when content like this are created, you'll be the first to see it. If there is any idea of a video that you would like me to make, do please put a, leave a comment in, in the comment section so that I can you know, review that and make that video to help you. So let's look at the PowerPoint slide that I've created for this. So like I said, the objective here is on simulation of bending. And if you think about what we're trying to do, so our domain is a virtual uh, a 3D system, which is a beam made of steel. The material that we're going to use will be steel with the young modulus given, the Poisson ratio and the yield stress. And the problem that we want to simulate in bending is a typical example of the kind of things you find in undergraduate textbook. So that's basically a simply supported beam that is of four meter long carrying a distributed load of 2,000 newton per meter with a central concentrated force of 5,000 newton. Um, and on the left side at A, we have the, the, the fixed support and on the right side or the pin support and on the right side, we've got the roller support. The cross section of the beam is basically shown like this. So we're going to set up this simulation within a final element code and then we're going to run for different different cross sections and these are the three cross sections we're going to do a rectangular cross section a circular cross section and an IB and then we'll see for example what the yield stress will be what the deflection would be and the effect of these different cross section shapes on the beam behavior that will be seen so this is the purpose of this video so let's jump jump straight to abacus and start off the model so here we are in abacus so we are going to then start off the modding. And the first thing you need to do is to create a part. So we're going to double click on that. And then our part, I'm going to call it simply a beam. Okay. It's going to be made of a 2D planar system. And I'm going to use a wire model. Because the longest pan of my beam is four. So if I, you know, do let's say 10, just about two and a half of that. So that would be acceptable. Okay. And now I'm going to use the wire sign. So if I click on this, so you can go to the base and specify the origin is at 00, zero and the final point will be 40 for the length of the wire. Okay, so what have we done? So you could see now that, okay, we've got an idea of our diagram of, of the sample of the beam. If you want, you can dimension it just to make sure that you're happy with everything. So it's definitely for meter long. So after you've done all that, so you right click, cancel procedure, and at the base here, you click done. Okay. So now you've created the path, you've created the, the beam model. Now, maybe we could think about, I like to walk my way through this. Okay. So why not think about the material? So double click on material and I'm going to call it steel, the mechanical properties, elastic behavior, so my elastic behavior, the Young's modulus will be 210 e to power 9 and then 0 0.33 would be the properties. Okay, so that's our material done. So what about the profile? So we have to create three profiles. So the first one is the box rectangle, box profile, which is a rectangle. So the box profile, which is a rectangle. So if you continue that, so the dimensions of the rectangle, so the rectangle has got a base of 100 millimeters and a height of 200 millimeters with a thickness all through uniform of point of 20 millimeters. So we're going to convert those numbers even onto, onto meters. So the width is 0 point, which is the, the, the width of this 0 0.1. The height is 0 0.2, it's uniform and the thickness all through will be 0 0.02. So this is our box profile, which is for the rectangle. Now the next profile, we'll double click there again. So the next profile is our pipe profile, which is for the 
rectangle for the circle. So let's look at what the circle profile looks like. So the circle has got an external diameter of 100, a radius of 100 millimeter and a thickness of 20. So that means the internal diameter will be 80. So the radius is 0 0.100 and the thickness is 0 0.02 for the circle. So finally, we do the eye section beam. So we we'll call this um, eye section okay, profile. So let's check what the eye section profile looks like. So the eye section profile has a base of 100 and a height of 200 and it's uniform in all directions. So, so putting in this value, obviously, the first term here is the eye term, which is the, um, the, the y position, the center of gravity. Because everything is balanced, the center of gravity here will be 0 0.1. The overall height of this is 0 0.2. The base, the B1, is 0 0.1. Is the same at the top, 0 0.1. The thickness is 0 0.02, 0 0.02, 0 0.02. The same all through. Okay, so we have the three profiles. So this I will change that and I renamed it the pipe profile. So we've got all the three profiles available. Now let's create sections. So I'm going to call a beam section for pipe, for box. So make that a beam, beam continue. So the profile name would be for a box and it's made of steel material. And then we accept that. Okay. So we go back again and create another section. So beam section for pipe. Um, so we go beam for section for pipe. So we do that. So beam section for I section. I beam. Okay. Okay. So we have the three section, different sections for that. So what we're going to then do now, okay, we could go into the beam section and then start with the beam, the beam section, do a section assignment. So you double click on the section, double click there. So it would ask you, so if you double click on section assignment, so at the base here, it says select the region to be assigned the section. So we don't want to create a set. Okay, so I'll just select that region and click done. It gives you this window that says, okay, which section are you interested in? So we could start off first by saying, okay, I want to do the box section and click okay. So that means my box section is selected um, and everything is fine, nothing to worry about. So we could then do a mesh. So maybe before we do that, so we could select, okay, I want to do um, a feature. So let's create a feature. Um, okay, not, not in that mesh module. So let's still stay in the part module tools reference point. So the reference point where we're going to apply our central load will be in the middle. So I'll select that reference point and call it LP. So that's my reference point. Um, if I just, and then we, we would now mesh. So if you double click on the mesh, select mesh. So it's recommending a mesh global size of point that it, let's do something, you know, really very small, just a super meshed model. Okay, so that could be, so if we do that, then we can mesh it, select the mesh. Yes, okay to mesh. All right, so that looks all right. It said it's got 4,000 elements, maybe 4,000 elements too much. So why not, let's do that 0 0.05 so that we don't have excessive mesh. Okay, 800 elements is fine. So we could then create a set for so um, center point set, note set, note. Right. So that is my center point note set. Okay. And I want to associate it to a node, continue. And then you select the node exactly at the point where the reference point is. Okay. So that's the node. So we've selected that and click done. Okay, now what we can then do next is as create an assembly. 
so if you look at the assembly double click on the instance okay the assembly is a beam that's all right okay so we close the assembly double click on the step so and at the top you could call it a uh, bending load step the bending load step continue all right so that gives you that and then after that if the field up with interactions boundary conditions so double click here so the first thing is i'm going to call this a pin so left pin support okay it should be an initial boundary condition using displacement continue so you start basically that's the beam so you start and select the first point there okay um, and then at the base here after you selected create select the region for the boundary create done okay and then it will now give you a window for that first case so we want to fix it in the x and y direction which is the one and two direction and click ok so and we could see here that it shows the x and y selected okay so we do the same for the roller support so right roller support okay so right roller support if that's what you're looking for still using the displacement module and then go all the way and select the right hand side okay and then click done so the window comes up here asking you i want only in the y direction to restrain it okay so we have also the y direction loading available now we apply our load so we double click on the load so our load has to be associated with the loading step so i'm going to call this the concentrated Okay, call it a point load. Point load. Okay, so it will be a concentrated force. Okay, it will be a concentrated force. So you click continue, and then it gives you the option of what are you trying to do. So you select the point at the base here. So you select the point for the load. So clearly, we we'll look for the set. So if you click on the right hand side, the set comes up. So what do we have with the set? center point tell it to highlight so it highlights on the model if that is that the, if that's the right kind of set that we want okay the center point node set is there and it has to be in okay and then that's the y direction so it was 5000 but it's acting down minus so it's going downwards so that's the light right load so you can see it's it's visible now here if we look at the mesh so the mesh shows the load is applied there so the next thing we're going to do is the distributed load so this i call the distributed load and we're going to use a line load argument for this so the line load is what we are going to use continue um, and it will ask for some information so select the bodies for the load so we want every of those bodies and then in the y direction is what we want so minus 2000 is the load the distribution is uniform okay and everything is fine with this so click ok all right so it shows the distributed load and the original loading all in place so if you double click here and then we could say okay job um, box profile okay continue done so with that we can then run this submit the result okay so we need to do something so if we go back to the beam there's a step that we miss so while the beam is here you know in the property module in the property module so you go to the property module so we click on that and it says okay select the region to be assigned so we select that region and click done so accept all this as done so it gives the direction of which one is it one axis the y axis so that the beam will have you have an idea of what you're doing and then click ok so if you go to the top just to visualize this so if you do view part display option at the base here it says render the beam profile and click apply so you see it shows you now the beam profile has been rendered and we check whether it is exactly what we wanted so that's yeah that's the box profile so that's the beam profile so it's not being a straight line as we saw before it's actually 
the main thing there. All right, so we just submit. Okay, job completed. So we can look at the results to make sure we're happy with it. All right, so that result looks fine. So we can get go to view ODB display option, and then again render beam profile apply. So it gives us the same beam profile we rendered so that it will have a 3D view. So we are happy. So we look everything. Everything is fine. Okay. So now we go back to the model and try and model the other cases. So if I do a different section assignment, double click on section here. Instead of a beam section, I want now a pipe section and click OK. That's the only change you need to make. You run the model again. So I'm going to call this job um, pipe profile okay and then continue so that's that so i'll go back double click again change from a beam profile to an i beam and then create another job for that so job i section okay um profile so we have those three profiles included so if we then look at the sub sub submissions for them so the pipe profile submit. Then you also select this and submit. So if you go to the base, so both of them are submitted and they are running. So if you look here, so this profile submitted, submitted. The first, this one has been completed. So we look at the results. So what is the result for the this profile? So. So this is for the eye section beam, I believe. So this is the eye section beam completed. And then we now look at the, um, all right. So let's look at these results. Okay, so we need to, we didn't change that. So let's go and do the, instead of that, so let's select the pipe section, pipe profile. Okay, so the pipe profile has been done. Now we can run this to make sure that it works. Okay, yes, so you need to complete the simulation before you submit because once you make the change, it's using the current information. So select the profile, run the model, and then show the results. So if you look at the results now, so you can see the pipe profile is there. And now if we look at all three of them, so if I do viewport create, viewport create, so I've created two viewports, then I'll now tile them horizontally okay so that probably will be the best and then we now look at viewport linked then we can then look at the results that will show us so this is so it's changed so you click on there and select the first one which is a box profile okay and display the result fit it in the second one click on there select the profile which is a pipe profile which is there select the third one select the profile here which is an eye section beam and that okay so we have all the results every one of them all shown in that view so we can also look at other directions okay yes okay so we can also show just the on the form profile so you could see what's happening with all three of them. So different behaviors. And really what's important is to look at the numbers. Okay, the numbers. So for example, the von Mistress for the box profile is 1.78. So if you look at the actual stress, stress is S1. So which is a bending stress, 1.78 here, 1.76, Pascal and two. So there's a, a bigger stress on the I section beam. What if we look at the displacement, the the the, the this, this displacement in the y direction, because this is the direction. So what you see here is okay. The maximum is one point minus one point three zero. This is minus one point two two eight, and minus that. So different values that you can get from from this result. So if we tile this horizontally, vertically. Okay, so it shows again what we're saying. So you could look at the values. If we just look at the uh, the magnitude of the displacement, get to the end, you get different results as well. 
So show the deformed profile, hold and move. You can then show the different deformed profile. If you look at other views, so you can see what is going on. If you animate this solution, it again shows you different kind of behavior that you will get in this in this this result. So the, the effect of of cross section clearly has an has an impact on the result that you're getting uh, from your simulation and the values here of what the maximum would be in all three cases already show you different the eye section beam has a quite a different tolerance behavior compared to these other ones um, i try to keep the cross sections of course uh, the, the same in terms of height but overall um, you, you tend to have different behaviors for all three of them and, and these are, this is kind of things that you know you need to be aware of when you're considering setting up a bending analysis simulation for all this and, and this is a you know the effect of cross-section on our result all right so thank you very much for your interest in this channel again if you are if this is the kind of content that you like please do subscribe to this channel and, um, and i'll see you in the next video bye